Welcome to this video for step 3 of demand forecasting. In the introductory video, I talked about these five specific steps on um, how can we improve the accuracy of our forecasting processes. The first step, we talked about what to forecast, the span and the scope. Um, in the second video, we talked about getting appropriate data and we saw the within firm and across firm problems for getting appropriate data. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about selecting the right forecasting model. So when we talk of forecasting models, there are two dominant streams of thought, the quantitative stream and the qualitative stream. So the quantitative stream has an assumption that the past will repeat in the future, which is not a very inaccurate assumption. It does, especially in the short term, there is some kind of repetition. But the qualitative method does not have this assumption at all. So especially for products where we do not have good past data, or for products that are uh, relatively uh, new, or in cases where we are trying to forecast extremely long term, qualitative methods tend to be much better than the quantitative methods. Uh, I'm not going to talk of qualitative methods here, and the focus of the series of videos is quantitative. So in quantitative, we have three primary divisions. Primary one is time series, where, and we're going to talk about more of time series in the next slide. And here we say that the, the, the demand of a particular product is based on time. So as time changes, the demand of that particular product changes predictably. The second method is a regression based method that we say that the demand of a forecast or the demand forecast or the demand of a product is dependent on the on, on some other factors. So the demand could be based on, um, let's say, the number of salespeople employed or the advertising budget or the temperature um, or something like that. So, so here we have two factors uh, or two things which vary together and we use that common variation to forecast and these are regression based methods. The third is the big database methods which are primarily available because of the high amount of data generated by online shipping, online shopping. So because of that, we can actually know how did the customer actually come into our online store? What path did the customer use? how much did the customer browse, and, and then how much did the customer ultimately buy or not. And we can use this data to design promotion plans and then actually forecast that depending on these promotion plans, depending on how many customers come on, on which route, what is our sale likely to be or what is the demand likely to be. So going back to the time series, um, is, is I told you something that we're going to talk about. Now, Time series based methods say that there are four primary variations. Okay, one is level where uh, we say that the demand fluctuates around an average number. So it's more or less uniform, but it fluctuates around some average. Um, so for us at our homes, the demand for grocery item, milk, bread, eggs, such items are, is generally uniform, unless of course we have guests, but in usual cases it is uniform. Uh, second is this idea of uh, seasonality, which uh, you see right here. Uh, seasonality is where we say that the demand goes up and down at a constant um, time or at, at a given particular time within a period. So, so Christmas is a good example of season. Diwali or Eids are also a good example of season. But that's not what season is all about. Um, season can also be within a week. So weekend is a good season for some shopping malls or um, it can even be within a day. So, so for example, that a bank uh, has a peak season at, uh, let's say, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So, so season doesn't have to be about summer, winter, autumn, spring or particular festivals. Season is about any repeatable pattern that you see within a given period of time. Third is, uh, bottom here, is this idea of a trend where we see that the demand continuously increases or continuously decreases over a period of time. So fashions are a good example of trends, right? And uh, the last is cycles where because of economic conditions, the demand keeps going up and down. So, so, so if the economy is good for the next three or four years, the demand for all products will be good. But if the economic cycle slumps, um, suddenly demand for all products uh, would slump down and we would have um, poor demand. So, so what happens is the demand signal that a particular product generates 
is actually a combination of all these four things that you see right here. So what we need to do here when we talk of selection of a model is to identify which out of these four variations exist. It could be a combination of level and season, level and trend, or level, trend, and season. So given our uh, span and scope of forecasting, uh, we need to get the right data and plot the data to see which of these four um, patterns do we see in our data and then use the appropriate method of forecasting to um, generate uh, forecasts and um, for our product. Well, uh, that's about it for this session. In the next session, we will talk about two of the most common methods which are useful uh, if we have only level variation in our data. Thank you for being with me. Uh, see you across in the next video.